Sent, uh, you sent me a shirt for my, if this is our my 50th year, it's in my senior class would have oh, played, really? so they, having a reunion, so they sent me a shirt. Oh, that's nice of them. Yeah. Ready, Brian? Ready. Are we time? All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Roll call. Clark? Here. David? Here. Fish? Here. Jorgensen? Here. Call? Here. Parliament? Mayor Heinitz? Here. They tried that. The agenda will include obviously the budget workshop workshop session work session workshop. So I'll look for a uh, motion and approval of the agenda. Second. So a motion and a second to approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Budget work session 2022 proposed expenses. Where did we leave off, Brian? We ended on the police department. All right. What page was that actually? That would be page 19, 19 on the packet. On the okay. Actually, I would request that we back up a page because we were talking about um, engineering and Tammy wasn't here. Yeah, that's right. And we had some questions for her. Okay, so um, Tammy, you weren't here, but we were talking about whether or not you needed some help. And a few of us were thinking that you probably do with the amount of infrastructure projects that we're working on and construction needs. And uh, I think it's pretty recognizable that you work a lot of extra hours. So um, I don't know if you could talk a little bit to that, or I think um, answering some of the questions that came up around the topic would be helpful too, like um, if there would be something for somebody to do in the winter, because it's, I think the, the summer stuff is obvious, um, but the winter stuff was maybe not quite so apparent. Um, so I don't know if you could maybe just tell us your thoughts. Yeah, um, you know, obviously the more projects that we do, the busier I am, especially in the summertime here. We have a lot going on, plus a lot of developments. Um, I'm pretty thankful that Ryan is working because he can kind of watch those developers and like he's running back and forth with the joint repair project and the repair at the railroad and kind of being my eyes on things as well as looking at site plans and that sort of thing. Um, I, you know, Christine and I talked about interns every year and to be honest, if we don't hire Ryan, then I don't want another intern just because interns take a lot of time there's a lot of training there. There's a lot of getting them up to speed and construction seasons three, four months out of the year. So when I'm the busiest, I don't really want another kid around to like try to take the time to train them up, to do things, to still check things over. It just doesn't work. Um, and it, it's not really fair to them either, you know. Uh, I. I've talked to mo like most of you about Ryan. I would love to hire Ryan. I mean, if now's the time to hire him, then he'd be perfect. Um, but if now's not the time to hire him, then maybe we start relying on, you know, other city employees to do some of that work, like public works. I think there was another public works member in the budget for that too. What kind of things can Ryan do for you that frees you up to do other things? Um, well, he does a lot of filing stuff for me. Um, he kind of put together all these filing cabinets because if you've been in my office, I have a lot of paper. Um, after like council meetings, he does the agreements, he scans them in, he saves them to the server. Like those little things save me a lot of time just because it takes a couple hours. Um, you know, he's kind of my eyes. He can run out and look at sites. If somebody calls, he can return those calls and answer questions that way. He, like the core area for trees, um, they needed to be staked out and what type the homeowner wanted, that sort of thing. He's pretty good with residents and I kind of let him go on that. There are a few hiccups along the way, but he learned pretty quickly to keep track of everything. 
Um, he does a lot of the mapping. So like I review plats and approve plats, but then you still have to go into AutoCAD. You have to draw it up. Um, other city staff members use that, but nobody really knows how to use AutoCAD, so they can't really draw anything up. Um, that's maybe one thing that maybe city staff could learn how to do more of that. Um, but at the same time, that costs more with licenses too, because we only have a couple licenses that you can actually edit the map where others are just viewers. So they can open it and look at it, but they can't do the work in it. Um, same with like GIS. Like I don't, I don't have time to sit there and mess with GIS. So GIS mapping is different than the AutoCAD mapping. Um, I prefer AutoCAD just because I can put a lot more information into it and measure things off of it. Where like GIS, you really don't. That's more of like a viewer. Um, Tim, I have a quick question though. Sorry. Um, so this was brought up when you were gone. Uh, Brian made a, you know, a good point, a valid point that you don't create a position for someone, right? You, so my point, and I know we have obviously a good candidate, it sounds like, for it. So my thing is, what do you see in this position? Like, obviously we know we probably have a qualified candidate, but is this something that you see standing with, you know, time? Obviously, if you have somebody like, is it like an assistant or is it like, you know what I'm saying? Like the work that can do... Like you said, obviously, there, mu there must be a lot for them to do um, that would make them maybe more qualified than maybe an office staff, right? Like, uh, I mean, to me, I'm just li listening to some of that stuff. I'm thinking that's more specific where, like, that GIS and all that stuff that, you know, so I'm just saying, are, are you thinking this would be something that you'd be able to, like, what kind of position, if we create a position, like, do we do job descriptions and stuff like that? Like, if you have to write a job description, what would it entail or what would the title be so like the city of Harrisburg just hired a GIS coordinator and that person does you know a lot of the mapping a lot of the plat work um, you know when developments come in after the construction they're supposed to give us they don't always do that but we've been pushing it more that they give us the as built mm -hmm. because just because it's designed on paper one way doesn't mean that's actually how it's built and so there's a lot of that stuff that kind of gets done after the fact, after construction. Um, a lot of that kind of stuff is really more on the GIS coordinator. Okay. Um, they'd be more of like a planning type of person. What would the salary range then be? Like, to, obviously it's a budget, I mean. Uh, GIS people are pretty expensive. I would say it's more in that 20 to $25 an hour range. Okay. I think the big question, well, at least, my recollection was there's no question you could use them from March 1st to November 1st. The question was, what do you do from November 1st to you know, March 1st? What are your thoughts on that? Um, so Ryan did work pretty late. I think he worked until the end of the year, last year. But putting together a lot of the maps is kind of a big ordeal because it takes a lot of time and I don't want to I don't want to spend the time to do that because I got design standards to update and other engineering things to update that are really way more important and they're way behind. I think the last time we updated our design standards was 2013 and our standard specifications I'm almost to the point of just removing those because they're completely outdated. Um, so Tammy, do you feel that, that you could keep him, I mean, this this is a 12 month position that you could fill? I think I could keep him busy all winter. I think that's in the time that I could actually sit down and spend time with him and talk about maps and where we want the mapping to go. And, you know, we've got building permits and everything that are paper copies. Um, those are things that could be scanned in, put on our server and put in a GIS map. So there's definitely work to be done. And I'm not saying that some of those things couldn't be done by other city staff or, you know, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Christina and Brian, that there's, I think we hired like a summer intern or something to scan in a lot of documents to put on our server. So I mean, you wouldn't have to necessarily pay somebody $25 an hour to do that stuff. Sure. So I think there's plenty of work to be done. and. 
somebody like Brian is pretty easy to get him to do different things because he likes to be well-rounded and work on different items. And is he just, I mean, again, not saying that he's, a, is he just graduating from college or has graduated from college? Or? Um, he graduated a couple years ago. Okay. Yeah. So he's kind of to the point where he needs benefits. So I don't know if that's 24 or what, but sure. I think by October he needs benefits. Mm -hmm. So we've had him for two years on a full-time temporary status. Is that right? So he's got two years of experience, but yeah. not the full year. Right. He's okay. still seasonal. Okay. But he's worked eight, seven to eight months. Is that correct? Yeah, this year. This year. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we've had a city engineer in Brandon for what, five years? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So we did work in Brandon previous to having a city engineer, right? Mm -hmm. We built four times the amount of houses in the city before we had a city engineer. So then who did all this work then? Uh, the city contracted with Stockwell engineers. So, so John Braun was like the city engineer, but it was Stockwell who did it. So they did the filing, the scanning, the clerical. Hmm. Um, so I have that problem multiple times when I'm looking for past projects is I can't find a plan set and I have to call Stockwell to get it. And they're not always so willing to give that to me. So... That's a good question. We fight that battle multiple times. Should they own them? No, the city should own them, but they still have to spend time to go back in their records to find them, to send them over. But cost-wise, having a consultant do that compared to us having an engineer, we were far smarter to have an engineer, <coughs> if I remember correctly. and. You've also gone out and found money to reimburse parts of your salary. Do you have any idea like what the equivalent of some of those reimbursed monies total in a year? Um, yeah, 25,000. 25,000. Is what comes back from the MPO. Okay. Which, which another person would be eligible for that too. I mean, we can up that. It's just a going to the MPO and asking for it. I mean, am I naive to, to think that you and Ryan and the amount reimbursed by the monies that you find as a steal compared to having consultants do all of the work that they were doing in years past? Yeah, I mean, a GIS coordinator at 25 bucks an hour is still cheaper than hiring a engineer at DGR for 80 to $150 an hour. So, Tammy, do you think that down the road, I don't know, three or four years, we're going to need a position, a full-fledged engineer like yourself for the city, or is it going to be more of a person that can, is kind of a jack-of-all-trades? Does not necessarily have to be an engineer that we have to pay engineer wages for? Where do you see us going with that? I kind of think we're a ways away from needing an assistant city engineer. I mean, I, I don't know. I guess it really depends on development and how many projects we're going to do. Like right now, we're doing a lot of projects. And you know, when I started, it was kind of that I'm OK with working really hard and working long hours to kind of get things caught up. But it seems like we're not getting caught up. We're falling behind on some things. And I don't know how to catch them up. Well, I think like what the, what the mayor said and Vicki, let's just step back from Ryan and say we were going to create a new position. Can we, would we find somebody that's kind of like that jack of all trades kind of person? Well, and I know in the budget, the economic developer is part of that. Um, you know, maybe somebody in that position can help clean up some of the things. There's a lot of drainage areas and everything else that some of the developers own, but they think the city owns. 
you know, things like that that could be cleaned up. You know, they could work more one on one with the developers. And maybe that would take some questions off of me. I have a question for Brian. Brian, what is your recommendation on this? I mean, you are the uh, city administrator, you're the person that's. Uh, assesses these positions and makes a determination on whether or not you want to expand certain positions or not. I, I, you know, when I came here, it seemed to me that we had a city administrator and an assistant city administrator. Now we have a, a city administrator. So where are you at? We quite frankly need to staff, add staff in every department. You know, in comparing us with comparable sized cities, whether it's Vermillion, Mitchell, uh, Spearfish, et cetera, the num numbers that we usually take a look at, we are understaffed in each and every department. So each and every department, you know, is maxed. The more projects that we do, the more, the more the engineering department's gonna get stressed. Uh, you know, in talking with, with Raleigh and Public Works, there's a number of things that, that we need to get rolling on, but we just don't have the staff time to do it, because it's the same thing. In the summertime, you know, we've got patching, we've got concrete, we've got sidewalks, we've got painting, we've got jetting, we've got hydrant flushing, we've got, so it's across the board, folks. We, we are woefully understaffed across the board. I know where Tammy's coming from, all of that stuff. I would love to have a fully functional GIS system. That was the original intent when we started three or four or five years ago with trying to get an intern in. At some point in time, I want all of the GIS stuff, all of the mapping, all of the property records on a GIS system. So if there's a question on a parcel, we can click on a parcel and there it is. Um, Like I said, we're understaffed across the board. Um, well, Brian, if that if, if if that's the case, which I, you know, in my brief time, I know there's a lot going on. I'm I'm amazed at how much is going on. At some point, you got to rectify that. You got to start somewhere. Yep. Maybe this is where we start. Maybe this is the position that we start with, and we we look at this going forward. We can't add five people in one year. No, we, no. we know that. But we could add one person in one year, whether well, or not we've, prior. We've got proposed prior. in here two new staff, uh, one in the finance and then one in sewer. Um, and we understand we can't just throw five employees on there and then we need to take a look and see, you know, where we can. We, we need to prioritize staff additions just like we do projects. Anyway. And that's where I guess I'm coming from. We're looking at this position. Are, have we heard what other positions, you know, I think Christina mentioned another position. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Raleigh's mentioning. Yep. I would rather see what, what are your priorities and let's get started on doing something, but let's do it based on a plan going forward. We did, I did ask department heads to give me a, you know, as part of the CIP stuff, at least kind of an idea of the next five years. Where are we at with staffing? Where do you think you're gonna need staff in the next five years? I, I, don't, want, I don't want to play one department against the other no. when it comes to staffing. So I have another question for you down here a couple pages um, and I know this was we we were gonna hire this this year maybe we still do but what do you think the economic development person is going to do and well, what what sort of so taking some stuff off of some other people's plates this person would probably come in handy with that I would think you know and I just haven't got around I've 
on about the third or fourth revision for the job description. I don't like where we're at with it, and I don't want to put out a job description that doesn't make much sense. As far as the development director's position goes, um, I think it will take eventually a lot of P and Z stuff off of the engineer's desk. It's not going to remove plat reviews. It's not going to remove um, an engineering perspective on concept or development or preliminary plans or anything like that. But as far as P and Z work, the development director is going to take all of that. Is there going to be a, a transition period? Yes. It's going to depend on what type of individual we hire or what experience that individual has. If they're planning and zoning person, uh, Sioux Metro Growth can help out with the development stuff. I've done development deals for 30 years. I know TIF. That kind of stuff, it's easy. If we hire a developer, economic development director that doesn't have P&Z experience, that's not so tough to learn. Um, I would certainly sit down with that person and work through it. So that P and Z stuff will be off the engineer's plate. Um, you know, it all depends on the qualifications of the person. I, at this point in time, I don't know, you know. Do they have GIS experience? I don't know. Uh, is that the primary function of the development director? No. Um, I guess my question right now would be, yes, we feel like we've identified that there is a need there, but at this point, I don't know that we've identified all the other needs that we have and then prioritize those needs. And I guess I would ask that we do that, go through the budget, find out exactly what we feel we need, and at that point make decisions based on new additional positions. Correct. So. We really have to get through the budget tonight, through all of the departments, and then after that, certainly go through these discussions. Are you okay with that? I mean, I just feel like we're so focused on this one part of it that we may be not seeing all the things that we might need in other areas down the road. And I feel like we need to go through the, the whole thing before we come back to the one thing. Yeah, I guess I'd like to see if we're short in the office, then I'd like to see what's not getting done. Because, I, I, and I'm sure there are things, but I need more of a justification than saying, you know, we need somebody to do accounts receivable or accounts payable. So if, they're def if there's certainly a need there, then I guess I would like it detailed. And that's mm -hmm. what you're saying, Mayor. What are we missing? Yeah. So if we could go through the rest of the budget and then if we can get to that this time or next time, come back looking at priorities and see if it fits into the budget, we can do that. And I guess we would want that from from the, all the departments. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. I, I mean, I've heard maybe Raleigh needs somebody. I, I, you know, I totally understand that Tammy has need. I mean, I, I'm amazed at the amount of projects we've got going on, how you keep track of everything. That's, that's, and you know, I think Brian hit the nail on the head. We're understaffed. Now, we can't add everybody at one time, so we need to really dig and prioritize so we get the right people in the right sequence. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I would just concur with what Barb said. I, I struggle with seeing an addition in, in finance because we just added somebody, I believe it was in 2019, um, as a half-time position. If anything, I could see a compromise to change that from a half-time position to a full-time position. But we just hired and just got support um, in 2019. And I think that's where my struggle is. I don't sure. see the, the, the need. Um, and we're talking about not creating a position for the person. Well, if our part-time position isn't working anymore, then, then we need to change it to a full-time position. I mean, to me, that would be the next step. It wouldn't just be, let's add more help where we've already recently added help while we see somebody else burn the candle at both ends and right. work 100 hours a week. Yeah, and I'm not trying to put a damper on that, on the engineering department. I just feel like we need to come back to the, all of the positions, discuss them a little bit more, yeah. 
and have a plan on the additions that we need to make. Again, understanding that we can't do it all in one year. But uh, so let's let's move on, Brian, to the let's not necessarily focus on personnel. Let's look at the budgets. Here. Yep. Uh, police department. Relatively flat, looking at two vehicles. Uh, one, one normal rotation. Uh, we have one patrol car that's up for a normal rotation, and then we do have that secondary that travel vehicle, the um, vehicle that's seen by or that will be used by a detective. Um, that is possible to be able to replay. So, one thing the new equipment for the vehicle and the switch over for the vehicle don't include at least in the proposal here, um, a, basically a full-blown squad unit. Originally when this was put together it was just by a sedan for the detective. In talking with the chief, it's my opinion that if we're going to get a, a vehicle for the detective, we need a computer in it. And I would just as soon see that as a pursuit-rated vehicle. Maybe not with a light bar, but wig wags in the grill. Because unfortunately, at some point in time, the detective's going to be out on patrol or, or going someplace and a call is going to come in. And that detective is going to be, I don't want to say hot pursuit, but you know, we don't want them in a substandard vehicle. Because yeah. I know it's going to happen. So the equipment, new, new equipment for the vehicle and the switchover would, would need to increase a little bit yeah. for the computer and the, and the changeover. So, Jamie, we do have a normal rotation on. How we wrote. Yeah, um, we do in our the 2017 is the one that's up for, and I apologize, I don't know the mileage is way off the top of my head, but that's the, that's the vehicle that's up for a rotation. Okay. Yeah. And it's, it's based on mileage. We do have some years where there's two patrol cars because we buy two units a year, but sure. this year and next year it's only a single car that are up for rotation. Okay. And we try to keep those vehicles, you know, somewhere. It'd be nice to keep them at 100,000, about 100 to 125 miles on them. Because um, actually the wear and tear on them are, are much more significant than the miles show. Thank you for the miles. Well, it's, it's the idle time, you know, where, where the guys are running traffic, so the cars sit in there idling in the winter or the summer to keep cool or warm. And then they see a speeder, and then it's, it's go. So it's, we should put the hour meters on them to keep track of hours instead of mileage. Otherwise, um, so as an example, this budget is up almost 15%. So I guess fill in the gap for me. What am I missing? Where is it all coming from? So the, the budget itself, I'll say, if you take out wages, insurance, So I guess we'll probably get around to that discussion at the end, the benefits and the salary increase. Uh, fire department, the, the biggest thing there is professional services, which is the normal day-to-day O&M for the department, and then the capital additional request is uh, funding future equipment purchases, fire trucks, et cetera. Those are both calculated based upon the increase in the levy. So the same percentage increase that we see in the levy. And we've done that for since the mid mid two thousands. And are we of the opinion that we want to continue with the ambulance contract? I presume so, but it's here. Uh, building inspections. Uh, See, but like, insurance because yeah. we had an employee switch over to family coverage. Yeah, I mean, like, this one's up 18%, so these numbers are pretty large. So I guess I just want to caution everybody that 
you know, once they're in there, they don't go down. So I think we need to be cognizant of that. Traffic, we need to finish the transportation plan. Is the major, the major expenditure there. Uh, highways and streets. Other than wages, again, everything relatively flat. Looking at purchasing a new street sweeper for two hundred fifteen thousand, because we do need to get out and start sweeping streets a little more often. And the oldest one is. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, for a big for a big broom and a vacuum? Yeah. It's expensive. And that's they're even more expensive than that. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> so yep. Paved streets, nothing nothing major there. Snow removal is flat. Uh, once again I always caution the council to this point in the budget discussion. It all depends on how much snow we get. So if we get a good year, that's going to be more than enough. If we get a bad year, we're not going to stop plowing snow. As you can look at 2019, you know, we had 120, whereas 2020, we were only at 40. So storm drainage, we've got 900,000 for that big Sioux wreck storm sewer project. Uh, the, the next line down, zero scaping, possible Holly Boulevard, 100,000. Holly Boulevard, the boulevards are not in great shape. They are weed infested, etc. So a number of years ago, I can't remember how many, mm, seven, eight, when we had Gal Baby come in and Reseed. We, we tilled them up. We brought some more black dirt in. We reseeded. Uh, they're still back in the same shape they are currently, or they were. Some some areas they're okay because the neighbors water. The vast majority of Holly they don't. So, harebrained idea. Tammy and I have talked. It'd be nice to have some zero scaping examples that people could look at. So when we're talking about what zero scaping is, people can see what it is instead of us just talking about, oh, it's native plants and vegetations and so on and so forth. So the off the wall concept is we get a hold of three landscape companies. We give them each an area of holly and say, show us what you can do. We want um, vegetation that will hold up to the rigors of holly whether it's the salt or the plowing or the non-watering um, and then use the best, choose the best one as an example of how we can improve the looks of our main thoroughfares. So that's what that 100,000 is for. So is that proposals or the actual work to be done? They would actually do the work. Okay. What the, the thinking is, we're going to tell them, you get 30 grand, you've got from here to here, whether it's a block or, or whatever, show us what you can do. Instead of trying to spec out X number of plants and so on and so forth, it'd, be, it'd just be nice to see what they can show us. And then that would give us some great examples of what zero scaping is and what it can do. And then eventually... Uh, you know, we added the flower baskets on holly to, to spruce things up. They, they look very nice, but if you look below the flower baskets, the vast majority of that's junk. And yes, the adjacent property owners are supposed to keep care, track of the boulevards. They don't. The vast majority of them don't. Um, so it's an attempt to spruce up the community. And then, like I said, once we take a look at the different test plots, so to speak, we decide which type of zero scaping we want to pursue down the holly. 
and or split rock in the future. Uh, sidewalks, crosswalks. We've increased the sidewalk repairs. Uh, finished the bike plan. Sidewalks set up in. Yeah, that next thing. South of Redwood, east of Split Rock. Where Chuck Parsons lives, that area. Um, when that subdivision was done 20 years ago, uh, the, unfortunately the utility trenches weren't exactly compacted well. So as those have settled, sidewalks have settled, cracked, uh, as well as a number of trees that are creating issues with the sidewalks. So we've got quite a bit of sidewalk repair in that area to get done. So we need to, we need to we've got a lot of sidewalks that are needed and needed of repair. How many communities take this burden on at the municipal level? So you know a lot of cities will put it on the property owner. Right. Um, they'll give them notice that they need to repair their sidewalk. If they don't, the city will come in and do it. Um, you know that's probably the vast majority of communities will put it on the property owner to repair those public sidewalks. So it's been every place I've lived besides here. So. If the city's going in and taking out a bunch of roots and making a tree vulnerable, though, I mean, do we have any exposure on that? I mean, we cut tree roots up. I mean, they're only taking the stuff that's only six inches deep. Those roots are up underneath the sidewalk and pushing the sidewalk up. So it's not like we're digging too far below the ground because they're only taking about six inches. They're making the sidewalk four inches thick and getting a two inch mat of gravel. So is there a reason why we've never put it back on the homeowner? Is it like an ordinance or, I mean, is, so, it, is it not that much money? I mean, I mean, we're talking about saving money here. I'm just, if most communities do it, do, or is it not a good thing to do? I don't know. Well, a, a couple of things. One, we've never, I shouldn't say never, we never really replace or, or put it on the homeowners in the past. Okay. Um, number one. Number two, and this is a philosophical opinion of mine, it's a city-owned sidewalk. Mm -hmm. We don't make them pay to replace the street. We don't.
don't make them pay to replace their neighbor's driveway. So why do we make homeowners pay to replace a public infrastructure? Good point. I mean, we, we, make them, we, we make them put it in to begin with, and then we make them pay to replace it if it's, if it's in bad shape, when it's ours. So that's just a, a philosophy or a theory. Um, I heard, you know, we didn't have sidewalks. Yeah. Other areas fill in circle. Some of those areas have sidewalks, so we didn't have to deal with them. And now that these areas, like Brian said, that are in development, they've been here for 20 years, they're getting more and more crowded. So the trees getting bigger and stuff. Yeah. It's more and more expensive for us. You know, I kind of look at it the same way that as boulevard trees. When I first came, we, we expended a, a huge amount of man hours going out and inventorying the trees, measuring the trees to make sure that they were 10 and 12 feet over the sidewalk in the street. We would spend ta staff time to send out notices. We would then go back, re-inspect all of the trees to make sure if they were trimmed or not. Then we would hire a contractor to go out and trim those trees, and then we would send those property owners a bill for 25 or 50 bucks. So we would spend about three weeks of staff time measuring trees. It's just much easier to go out and trim the trees mm -hmm. that we'd end up trimming anyway. Mm -hmm. And we don't bill the property owners for that. So, I mean, if the council wanted to, to get back into or get into for the first time notifying those property owners of sidewalks, we certainly can. I just find it much more efficient, much more effective if the city does it. Okay. I'm just curious. I was just mm -hmm. curious. Usually if there's a trip and crawl on the sidewalk, we're getting involved too. And they'll fill out a liability form and we'll send it off to insurance because it is a, it's in the public right away. So we've gotten involved in those too. And so we want to take care of a lot of those trip and fall ones before it happens as well. Uh, we control nothing major. Transit, like we talked about when the transit contract was up, these are the numbers based upon um, the grant application that Rock submitted to the state. These numbers may change depending on how much the state's going to decide to fund us. Animal control is the same, no indication from Sioux Falls Humane Society that they're going to change anything. Uh, West Nile is the same, again, uh, depends on how much water we get, how much spraying we're going to have to do. This year has been very nice, relatively dry. I haven't had to spray much. Again, uh, a typical year with average rainfall, we're out every other week spraying from probably mid-May. Uh, usually we start the uh, late May or for sure the first of June. We yeah. go through August, September, depending on weather. And that includes the larvicide that we place in standing water. Uh, recreation senior citizens, that's the payment we pay to the VFW for the senior citizens to meet there. Recreation center, that's our summer rec program. How's that going this year? It's good. Uh, went really well. We did a wrap up with her. They are done for the year. She's going to um, <coughs> get a report to us. We can get to you guys and just let you know how it went, but it went really well. Numbers, I'm assuming, were about the same. Yeah, she said they were about the same. I mean, do you think that that's something that we need to continue? It's not a big budget item, but... It's not a big budget item. Um, you know, a lot of it, I shouldn't say a lot of it, it does act as a daycare in the community for the summer. Uh, some of those kids, school-age kids in particular, their parents work. Uh, during the school year, they have a place to go. During the summer, they don't. So it does act as kind of a community daycare for some of those kids. You know, she makes it very clear that it's not a daycare, though. The kids no. are welcome to come and go. It, it is a, it's a program and a place for the kids to go in the summer. I think it's a good program for them. She does a lot of um, field trips, too, um, to allow to get the kids to do some of those activities, like three movies. On the road. Is it every day, uh, Christina? Yeah. Nine to 
9 30 till 3 actually 3 Monday through Friday hmm. and it's free right yeah, right. field trips, they have to sign up for pay. Where do they meet? At the elementary school, right in elementary. Okay. The old lunch room. Pardon? At the old lunch room. Oh. As an alum. Yeah. <laughs> uh, swimming pool. Pool staff, we've got a meeting tomorrow with Tyson to go over the, the year. You know, unfortunately, uh, as we all know, Sioux Falls bumped up their pool staff wages to attract additional people. We don't see that being decreased for next year. I think they're thirteen fifty an hour. So I would anticipate some pressure for us to bump ours up. What are we at? Ten ninety five. Still had two pools closed the entire summer. Mm -hmm. Yep, but we were fully staffed. Mm -hmm. okay. And they're start, the Sioux Falls is starting to close pools next They've already closed this week. Some. So did you feel the increase in to the wages? Some increase? Some. I I, I didn't really um, think about the too much of the Sioux Falls wages, but I did build some in there. Um, I'll kind of know where they they ended up this year here. Uh, their final payroll will be early September, so I'll know kind of know where they end up this year as well. I did like that post that went out, so thank you. Did you do yep. that, Christina? Yeah. I think it was a very good explanation of why we close when we do and mm -hmm. do. I mean, it was really nice. I yeah, that. I kind of looked at Sioux Falls as too and took a little bit off there, but um, I figured one of those questions might come up. So it's, yeah. Before it's right in line where we've closed before. Um, school usually would have started on the 18th this year. They've kind of pushed it back a week too, but yeah. college is still kind of get rolling. Yeah, they're on the limit, yeah. How come the utilities were such a big jump? It looks like the four year average was 8,500. and We've added the blue building, mm -hmm. and that has increased the, the utilities. Because that playground, right? I mean, that's constantly. With the play structure in the, in the slides. Well, the year to date, you're only going through June, and most of our, you know, we haven't even gotten our June utility bills in yet. So all of, all of your summer usage is really the last half of the year. And then chairs, we always have constant requests for more chairs. And then I'm going to talk to Tyson tomorrow about it. Kind of told him to what we want to do with concessions. Um, we get some questions on it on vending machines versus concessions. So I kind of left it on Tyson to talk to his management, and we'll talk about it tomorrow and discuss on whether we want to move back to concessions or not. What's in those vending machines? Um, we have, there's a pop machine and then there's a candy machine. It's got, it's got various options in there. So nothing healthy? No. Oh, <laughs> very few things probably healthy. And we got rid of the, the we switched over to the vending machines a, a few years ago after we actually started analyzing profit and loss in the concession stand and we were losing our shorts. Yeah, we were. Believe that. Parks Department. No major in the in the operation stuff. No. Um, capital improvements. We've got two lists there as we normally do. Um, equipment, an RTV, a Gator, uh, painter forks, uh, a ball field drag, and a mower. And that that equates to the ninety two thousand. And then list number two is a dog park down in Aspen Park, hammock slack line in Aspen Park. Upgrades to the fields, um, some upgrades to Vets Memorial that needs some maintenance on it, and then a canoe launch that, that we've been talking with um, GF&P for a number of years. Mm -hmm. 
So that would be a canoe launch down in McCarty. And then we've got tall grass, playgrounds, playground and uh, surfacing. So that would be replacing the playground equipment at tall grass and at the same time putting in um, turf. turf. Hmm? Port in place. This would increase the the age range. I think right now it was designed for up to five, six, maybe seven year olds. Uh, so we'll be looking at making it into an older, putting in some components for older kids. What's the pour in place? What's that mean? Well, it's like a, like a pour in rubber. So like this, what the school like has? That's like what BE has. Yeah. Oh, okay, what the school has compared to like the turf. The turf. Right. Yep. Yeah, they're similar, what they do. One looks like grass, the other one will just be right. like that. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, our goal is to we want to try kind of one piece and see which one looks like better. The turf's been very well, so I'm curious to see what Yeah. Yeah. Uh, forestry and nursery, ongoing tree trimming and removals of ash trees. Do we think that's enough for removal? I don't know how many we can get done. Trimming and hiring mulching is the normal tree trimming that we do for boulevard trees. What area are we looking at doing next year? East. Okay, so we try to do a third of the town each year. And then the mulching for the tree drop off sites. Libraries, we haven't heard anything from the school about anything major at the library. Economic development, uh, full years of wages is the big change. Promoting the city is the flower baskets primarily. And then debt. I'll let you handle debt. Well, debt you can't control. Um, one that we'll be adding next year is the Rushmore Phase 1. And we are not, oh, we're moving, removing a small one next year, and that's the Bethany drainage, but other than that. Uh, and then at the bottom there is that operating transfer out, transferring to the golf course for their, um, mostly their wall, and then some projects. We'll have to fund until we get the project started and bonded. Third penny sales tax. Those are the dues that we pay to Sioux Metro, SeaCog, Municipal League, the Chamber. Um, the biggest one there is the interest for the Brandon Development Foundation on improvements up in the Rollbang Industrial Park. buying two parcels for core phase two might get them done this year but um, could roll in next year too That's what that drainage school is. be looking at school and then uh, Larry Naram's property south of the Lions south building of the school. south of the school south of BE mm -hmm. street maintenance fund that is funded out of our street maintenance fee that we talked about bumping up um, we fund slurry seal patching, painting, signs, etc. The big one there is the overlay. 
project for fifth and sixth slated for next year as well as McCarty Bridge repairs and then we would continue um, with the overlay at least on seventh now included in those fifth sixth Sue is also the side streets correct like Elm and Fur, etc. I'll let you handle all the debt service. The bid. Uh, bid is just debt. Um, the street funding is um, we receive a portion from the state for the STP for streets, and that would be transferring out to um, Rushmore Phase One and Two for those projects. Uh, the next one is rainwater and be our new rainwater fund. Um, we anticipate about 400,000 in revenue in there. So we would have um, just some projects that we would get started in that fund. Nothing really uh, concrete yet, but on what those projects will be. Uh, the next page, the tip two is debt. The other two are done, and at the bottom would be ironwood. Hope to construct ironwood next year, and that is the dollar amount that we're looking at for the construction project. Next page on page 34 at the top would be Redwood Chestnut. That's just continuing the design work on the Redwood and Chestnut. Core Phase 2 would be construction of Core Phase 2 at the 4.2. Uh, Rushmore Phase 1 would be finishing up, so it would be warranty work. And then we would start design work, work on Rushmore Phase 2. And what's that, Tam, uh, Christine? Rushmore? Rushmore is phase. the one we're doing right now. Right, but that, what's that's phase? That's phase one. Phase okay. two would be... Moving west. Going west. Yep. Moving west. I don't Probably remember which one. Cedar Circle and maybe Kirkwood area. We haven't really narrowed it down yet. There have been a few other issues kind of popping up out there, so we'll figure that out this fall. So would that be construction? And we just have a water conservation committee that they meet every once in a while. Water department, source of supply, we've got a well number six building to construct over well number six. Rehabbing it this year. Um, if you're down in Aspen Park, uh, well house number six is a little white, kind of outhousey looking shed that we would like to upgrade and make it a little more storm proof. Um, so it would be more consistent with the, the well houses that we have built recently. Uh, we'd be looking at water treatment plant construction starting next year. Um, distribution, we've got some money in there for modeling the system so we stay up to, up to speed on that, make sure it's, it's working properly. Phase three of the meter replacement program. How many phases is that? Six. Six. Seven. 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 Four left. The, well, I'm going to say this phase will get a lot of the older yeah. ones we're having problems with, but there are some areas out in the country club we do too, but this will get a, a lot of it caught up. A lot of the older ones for sure. Uh, improvements other than buildings, PRVs. Tammy? Um, these are pressure reducing valves. There is a section of town mostly the east side that looks like the water tower goes on board. Then they're going to need these installed because their pressure will be over 80 psi. So it's a need before we can turn the water tower on. So we have too much pressure? Yes. Yep. How many houses will that affect? 
Uh, 300-ish. Yeah, quite a few. Pretty much everything east of the golf course. How do they install them? Yeah. Like they have to go to each house? Yep. Oh, yeah. Do Raleigh's guys have to go to each house and do it, or you just give it to us and we have to do it? No. Yeah. We have our license oh. plumber to go here. in and do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is way over my head, no. people. <laughs> I'm like, I'm assuming I'm one of those houses. Way over my head. Me too. <laughs> Mayor. Um, me too. Don't blow me up at We night. can get Brian to come over and do it. <laughs> I'll do it. With, with, with that guarantee the words. <laughs> what? I say with dog, it'll take the skin off. Or... I, I, don't, I wouldn't worry about the skin getting ripped off in the shower. I'd be more worried about the pipes bursting in the basement. Yeah, well, hot water heaters and stuff. Some of those pressures will be in that 100 to 120, and you're not supposed to go over 80. So. And then we anticipate the water tower will we'll get done next year, so that's uh, next year's costs. Uh, administration... Um, Purchase of a, a pickup and computers. We do about one pickup a year between sewer, water, and streets to rotate those out on a regular basis. And then transferring out the engineer and the bonds, we divvy up the engineer costs a third to general fund, a third to sewer, a third to water, and then the bonds would be the share of the water um, construction costs for. Core phase one. Core Rushmore. Core Rushmore debt service. Okay. Street lighting. Nothing too crazy there. We are including costs for core phase two in the budget as we change some of those street lights out. Sewer fund. Looking at adding an employee in the sewer fund. Four. Unfortunately, I have five people, four people in my crew that could retire within the next five years. So I'd like to start now instead of trying to hire five in three years, four years. And then we also have, you know, Lolly and I have talked quite a bit for number of years we need to get out and, and start jetting sewers on a more regular basis and we just between street repairs and crack sealing and we just don't have the bodies to get out and, and do it but that's an essential um, work to be done for public works it's, it's part of our um, insurance as well if there is a sewer backup and we have jetted that sewer uh, in the last three to five years, usually that indicates that we're performing appropriate maintenance on that sewer, so that claim is usually denied. Um, if we don't get out there and jet those sewers, and it's been more than three to five years, our insurance company will pay that, that cost. So we need, to, we need to bump up our sewer maintenance, and, and included in that is uh, as we add storm sewers throughout the city, which we've never had before, we, we need to do some additional maintenance on our storm sewer systems as well. Cleaning catch basins, making sure those pipes are good. Um, you know, we've got a couple of great examples. Uh, we cleaned out that uh, concrete channel uh, on Aspen west of Chestnut last year, and it's filled up again and cattails are starting to grow. Well, we need to get out there and clean that on a regular basis. Same thing with the uh, uh, drainage way north of Redwood, running to Split Rock Creek. We need to get in there every year and, and kill the weeds and clean it, et cetera. And then we've got drainage ways, primarily out in the bluffs, <clears throat> that we're trying to work with the con or the developer to get them cleaned up and shaped up so then we can maintain them much easier, but we've got trees growing in them that we need to get mowed, trimmed. Um, if those waterways, drainage ways aren't working correctly and it backs up and causes damage to people's property, we're liable for that. So trees and bushes in drainage ways are not good. 
So we had a tour of that several years ago, and we're still not getting compliance on that issue? We've... I mean, what we've can got, we do? Yeah, we, we've got some work to do with the, with the developer. Some of those are easements, some of them we own. The, the developer didn't really um, build them the way they should have been built. Didn't take the time and effort to actually do it. And now you've got some folks who have kind of claimed them as their yard. So it's, it's dealing with those property owners as well. Some of, them, some of the folks like those trees in the waterways. We don't. Uh, we should just let the beavers go. And the, the trees would have been cleaned out. So as, like I said, as we get more su uh, storm sewer infrastructure, um, we're going to have a lot more work in storm sewer that we just haven't had before. You know, for instance, the, the detention facility at the south end of Rushmore. You know, we go from, from having nothing there, well, I shouldn't say that, but we had a 48-inch pipe, to having, uh, you know, a BMP down at the end of Rushmore. So that's going to require some maintenance as well. On the, the sewer jetting, if it's a liability issue, if we don't do it every three to five years, what percentage of our town are we exposed on right now that hasn't been done in three to five years? Collection and disposal, we need to design that, that sewer line to Sioux Falls. So that would take place next year. Um, Tammy had a meeting with Sioux Falls Friday. Friday. They are, and it's not included in, in the budget yet, um, they are looking at moving their headworks building. The headworks is where all the pipes come into the plant. That's where our force main goes into their Plant. They're looking at moving that over the next three years mm -hmm. to a different location. So uh, we have some costs involved with that relocation. Um, so we just talked today. Hopefully we can talk Sioux Falls into maybe letting us make payments over the next three years to pay for our share of the, of the costs instead of just sending us a bill when it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's that's the new force main to Sioux Falls. Now we would, when we build the new force main, we would have to pay the six hundred sixty thousand anyway. Yeah. But since they are relocating the building now, they would like to get the work done while they're under construction, oh. which makes perfect sense of them moving the building, getting work done, and then a year or two later, tear we tear it back up and bring our line in. Yeah. So um, is it like close to where it is? It goes from the kind of the center of their facility to the northwest right. corner. So that's that's just something that came up today. So. Utilities, Sioux Falls treatment, that's what we pay Sioux Falls. And that includes the anticipated, or the, the price increase on treatment costs. The SDC charges is the, the SDC charge that we pay to Sioux Falls, the system development charge for each new home that's connected based on meter size. 
we base that on 40 homes. I mean, this year we're at 57, so. We're gonna, our budget's probably blown this year. Yeah. Uh, the pool lift, as we've we talked about. Do we always pay for that, or does it, the developer does it? Or is we're phasing that over to oh, the developer, right. that's but what it's, we're phasing over. it still comes through us. Okay. So eventually when the developer contractors are, are paying 100%, it would be, we'll show a revenue to offset the expenditure. Oh, nice. The pool lift station, we've talked about that with the, with the renovations to the treatment plant and the, the pool. We need to upsize the pool lift. And, and yeah, it, Twin Rivers Crossing as well flows into there. Lift station rehab is just our normal upgrading or updating of, of lift stations. And then the east side or west side main for a million bucks, which is probably short. Not short. I haven't changed it yet. Um, we've got a cost estimate on the west side and the east side. So, yeah, that million isn't going to touch it. Well, we, we're not going to use it, Grant. Yeah. Yep, we anticipate using our. Uh, ARP funds, the 1.8 million in ARP to pay for whichever one comes in first at this point in time is probably going to be the west side sewer. Okay. We hear some rumblings out there that the state may have some additional funds available, so we're putting a list together of sewer and water projects that we can submit to them. No, no details, no official confirmation from the state that there's even money available. Are we talking to the county? Yeah. Yeah, we're working on yep. that too. Golf course. <clears throat> uh, looking at irrigation audit. audit. Um, for that, he's just, uh, nothing's been really done to the irrigation system since they redone it in 95. So he's looking at having somebody come in and see if he's getting good coverage, um, what there's needed for repairs or if there's leaks and um, some valves. So he said unless there's a major issue, staff can fix the majority of, it, of those. Um, and then the other one would be, the major would be uh, equipment. Um, we came up with a pretty good equipment plan for golf course maintenance. Um, to get them on a schedule where they're only buying one or two pieces of equipment a year versus doing our package bundle. So this will get them on the right track in the future. Uh, golf Course Pro Shop, we've got the GPS system in there, which... Screens are here. Uh, why are you still back order? So, <laughs> and the crew do, like two crews that travel the country that we saw them. and community room. Nothing too too crazy there. Um, air conditioning unit still on track for uh, I think I think you guys talked about last week. Clubhouse building expenses, we've got that uh, retaining wall included in there. As part of that retaining wall project would be the roadway going down to the maintenance building as well. And then patio, the patio on the north side um, needs to be replaced. Since uh, that would be furniture mostly. Yeah. The dollar amount in there would mostly be furniture. Yeah. The patio would get replaced in the retaining yeah. wall. Because it's settled a uh, good inch, inch and a half. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. That, pond, that pond will go away, so that will reduce some of our yep. maintenance costs on that. Debt, good news. The building will be paid off. So that comes off there. And then it's just uh, debt service on the leases for the equipment. So then, uh, so if the debt service comes off, 
Have we allocated that money then someplace else? Because no, I mean, I don't really, think. Typically, that was coming out of the general fund as a transfer over. You were going to try and get some money to do the sand traps. Did that ever happen? Uh, we're working on it. Working on it? Making progress, but... Good. Hopefully, I don't think it will be next meeting, but hopefully September I'll have an update on FEMA and where we're at. And hopefully can move forward with something. And we're not planning any transfers into the golf course next year? Uh, just for the wall just and the wall. debt, really, is what the transfer will cover. And refresh my memory. The building that's going up there now, what? Whatever. That's an altitude relief valve building for the water tower project. Okay. Christina's got some information that you requested at the last meeting. First one is asked um, budgeted wages versus insurance. So the top one would have been 2021, what was budgeted, and then that second line would be the revised budget with the wage changes in March. So you would have your committees, your part time, your full time, and then your total wages. The 2021 revised budgeted wages would be the three million, just a little over three million. And then the insurance budgeted number is at 771. And then the percentage of full-time versus insurance would be about 31%. And then that bottom one would be 2022 wages. Those are a few more columns. Um, so it's a little easier to compare. Um, but you have your total before your added staff at 3.17. And then your added staff and your total wages. And then kind of broke it down between current insurance and then insurance with the new employees and any, and any changes that we anticipate for next year to bring to your total insurance and then your percentage. These two new employees, that's assuming that the economic development person would have been hired, right? Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, that would have been the finance and the sewer one? Yep. Okay. Did we ever get the final number we were looking at 
our wages versus benefits, not wages versus insurance, like it's on this sheet. But we were talking about getting that finalized with what our our number is. I think we we're pushing like 40 percent with other benefits, time off, vacation, life, retirement. Yep. Do we ever get that? I think we were we still waiting on the sick time to be factored in there. Yeah, we gave you the number, but you wanted something with sick leave and vacation that everybody accrued at a different rate. Is that invisible paycheck? Well, I, just, I don't I think, think this is a fair reflection to just compare wages to insurance. But, I mean, that's. Uh, did we figure out what it would what it would cost if we eliminate our new hires having to pay? that buy down for three years? Yeah, so that second one would be the insurance. The first page would be your 6% increase with two new additional employees with a current policy. So the total insurance line is around 942. That second page would be eliminating that buy down where everybody would pay that 5% and increase is about 50,000. Now, it's, it's an estimate because I don't know what those new employees are going to take for coverage. Right. So I'm assuming that they'll take family. I'm totally in favor of finding 50000 in our budget to be able to do that for our new hires. I don't know where everybody else stands. And previously, we have not done the. No. Previously, they have to wait years. for until their fourth year before they get the same Nine. benefit that their colleague does. Yeah. Okay. That's a long so, time. It seems a bit yeah. unusual. I mean, I I'm used to some time frame, but maybe not quite that. I guess I'd like to go back to our position of, and I don't know what the number is, but we have a number for health insurance, and then we make, and then we have the staff just do what they need to do to make it work. Um, I'm not in favor of increasing our wages by the CPI. I'm thinking that our real estate goes up by. There's a, a limit on what our real estate can go up, our real estate growth. And maybe we tie it somehow to that. Because um, once these get in the budget, they, ne they never come back out. And if we're going to be tight on development, like our roads and stuff, I, I don't know that we can tie, or tie the next council that way. So we have taken CPIU since 2014. Um, prior to that, we've been doing 3%. I mean, if you would average it out, and we would have, would have done 3% over the, those years, I think it would have been at like 24%, but taking what we have taken since 2014 and taking the 5.4% next year, I think we're only at like 19.8%. So CPIU is what, we, what we've used for seven-ish years. If you wanted that to change, then we well, need to know what can, to use. I think we can, um, maybe we put a minimum and a maximum on it, something like that. Because um, this, the 5.4 percent you're talking about is in addition to their annual merit raise that they'd get anyways. The 5.4 percent is your January 1st raise. The COLA. So it would be your COLA. That's what the state uses, so that's what's going. The state uses the August one. We use the June one because we're preparing budget. Um, the state uses the August one, and that's what part-time wages will increase by. We anticipate that being around the 5%. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jack was asking at the last work session about what our savings would be if we implemented, implemented a um, spousal requirement where the spouse needed to take 
the insurance that they had at their job? Did we look into that? Yep, I did. I sent out a little survey to the employees as to who's got what type of coverage and if their spouses have coverage elsewhere. And what that cost would be. I got it in a spreadsheet, what they do with it. And not all spouses have coverage. It's probably less than 50%. That have them available? Yep. Or have? Have it available to them. So, and I haven't calculated what that cost savings would be, but I will do that. And the cost to the employees to purchase that coverage ranged anywhere from, I think, a low of $120, $530 up to $600 a month. For individual? Correct. So that would be the best thing if you're going to, I mean, are you going to set parameters if the spouses are paying more or a certain amount? Are you going to kick them off? I mean, just thoughts. That just seems extremely high for a single coverage. Sometimes they offer single coverage. It's on a group plan, but they pay the full amount. Correct. You know, getting back to the wages, what is it, 5.8? 5.4. 5.4 this particular year. And like it was pointed out, and I'm going to say it, back in 2014 when the inflation rate was low, the city changed it because it was favorable for the city. And now we've got this bump. Part of it is probably due to the COVID-related issues that have impacted everybody. And suddenly it's not favorable for the city, so now the desire is to change things. I guess I would support going for, on this particular budget, with 5.4, staying with that CPI, and then maybe coming up with a plan for the future of saying minimum, maximum, because they do start losing distance. And then we play like what we did with the police department. We're playing catch-up because the other communities that are competing against us or these people. Well, I would be in favor of that, Dave, except that our property tax is capped at 3%. And so, you know, we're just stuck that way. We have no flexibility there. So I struggle with trying to reconcile that because we are capped. Well, we're capped on property taxes, and I've always been somewhat optimistic on the sales tax. Sioux Falls is capped on their property tax also. They're growing. They get more. How many houses do we have this year so far? Fifty-seven so far. Fifty-seven. I think the last time we got the report it was 45. Now it's 57. That's going to add. The sales tax is where our future really lies. And with the, call me an optimist, but with the development out by the interstate, the talk of the development on the west side, I think our, and plus just the online buying that's been going on, I think our sales taxes are going to be looking better than what they have. I think our per capita for that is not capped, and that's where we're going to benefit. So I guess for this year I'm thinking, in fairness, we stay with the CPI that we went with back in 2014, and then we can have a discussion on what we're going to do in the future. Are we going to stick with the CPI? Are we going to put a minimum, maximum on there? And I guess that's just my thoughts on it. 
I would be more supportive of a compromise on the CPI. Um, this year we gave everybody raises and we gave everybody a new pay scale that makes every raise a bigger raise. So on the heels of a year where we're supposed to be very lean on our budget, I struggle with throwing that much more in that direction. But I would be, in, I would be open to a compromise. So correct me if I'm wrong, this 5.4 would be above what already had been done. Mm -hmm. or, so, and above their step increases that and given their there numbers. was something given in January? March. 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 Yep. Based on? Um, new pay scale. New pay scale, and then the police department has shown in their wage studies sure. in the previous years that they were underpaid. Right. So they got a, like a significant one, but everyone I think okay. at least got a 60 cent raise, which I figured out like twelve, thirteen hundred dollars a year. So. Sure. And some might have got more than that. Oh, yeah, some might have got more than that right. too, but. Um, but at, and then that was in addition to their cooler, which wasn't that much this year, and um, their merit. Another another compromise might be that we do the coal do I don't know if we do three percent, and that goes into their built-in sa their salary, and the rest of it is a bonus. Because my concern is that once this gets into the salary base, it's just. A compounding is like a snowball running downhill. It just builds up a lot of momentum. So perhaps we could do some as a bonus so it doesn't go into the pay scale for next year. It's just kind of an outside thing. I don't know if that's... I think it's a good idea. I, I don't know if I'm afraid this snowball is going to continue with the pressure on wages in general. And we're going to see this going forward in every every walk. So I... I don't know, I don't know, I, it's not an easy solution. So what would their total compensation increase be for the year? Do we have any idea? Well, I guess it's one What's of that? these charts. So you, there was a mayor, or what did you call the increase in March? That was a... New pay scale. New that pay was scale. a new pay scale. That was just a new pay okay. scale that everyone went up. And then they call it a merit, right? You guys go by... Is it a merit raise, that, like depending on every year? Yep, on their Stop. on an anniversary date, as long as they get a, an acceptable performance okay. review, then they, they go, go up a step. Okay. So, 2021, the revised budgeted wages, uh, three million eighteen thousand. Okay. 2022 budgeted wages with two full-time staff is three point one seven. Yeah, I see that. Oh, so that's before adding that's staff. Before. So really we're looking at, with the added staff, with this proposal, the 3.282. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So that's 270000 in wages and then the health insurance. Sure. That's well, 111, right? Okay, so what do we... Uh, what do we have to do here? I mean, are we coming back to make a final decision or what? Yep, I would anticipate two more budget meetings. Are you kidding? Yep, we got five. We got five Mondays in August. <laughs> I thought we were going to do it faster this time, Brian. Well, we started sooner. Mm. Um, what I would anticipate is, if you have any ideas or thoughts or something you want to see, let us know. The next budget meeting would be uh, the twenty. No. I don't have a calendar. What is today, the 9th, the 6th, 23rd? Yeah, the 23rd, and then the final one to go over the final, final budget would be on the 30th. Okay. And that one would be what we would present for consideration at the first meeting in September. Well, I mean, I, I think everybody up here has got different opinions, so, I mean, how, how are we... We're going to have to do motions. On CPI, we'll have to do motions on. You mentioned going forward, it's going to forty-five dollars per meeting. We'll need a motion on that. Um, you mean when we're, when we're doing the discussion, or I mean, how are we going to reconcile this discussion? I guess it's <clears throat> my question. Well, 
you know, we'll, we'll give you, you wanted some more information, you wanted total benefits, um, the cost savings, which I'll get, um, maybe look at a 3% base and a 2.4% yeah, bonus, something like that. I think that's the key, that. Brian, right there. I think that's what you're saying. We're going to at least have to see what a 3% yeah. base would so be. So we'll, we'll start taking a look at some of that stuff, and I know Christina's got some notes here, too. Um, so we can present that at the next budget work session uh, two weeks from today. And then the council will need to make that decision by a formal motion in order to change whatever you want to change it to. Well, I think it's interesting to see what the difference yep. is between the proposed and 3%. Correct. Might, might be fairly insignificant. Yeah, we, we'll see. You know, there's, there's some differing opinions on the council, so we as staff would have a tough time figuring out what you want to do. Sure. I think the other thing we got to figure out is the additions, you know, yep. have what we're going to approve for, you know, is the engineering issue, is this, you know, the uh, finance. At, at this point, has there been anything additional approved? No. No. No, okay. nothing's approved until the, the budget's okay. done. Well, I didn't um, think so, but I didn't know if something had happened nope. earlier this year that I wasn't aware of. Other than economic developer, that's Correct. the only one that's just kind of being delayed, but that was approved. Yep, so right. I, I think okay. as far as the, the potential jobs for new employees or new hires for 2022, we could, I don't want to say we'll have a full-blown job description. No, but, but if you could have an a, idea of, kind of a, these are the three or four, whatever. A concept. So, and I don't mean this, is the economic development director, is that a full-time yep. job? Yep. So. It would be, yeah, it's, right it, now, that's what Dennis Olson is right. doing, right? Yeah, right, right now, Dennis Olson does economic development for us as well as working with the Development Foundation as kind of right. their staff person. Planning and zoning duties are handled by Tammy. The, so some of Tammy's... Yes, it's, it's not an economic development position, it's a development director position that will do both planning and zoning and economic development, industrial development. So... I guess where I'm going with this, is this a person that could help Tammy also in take and alleviate some of her... The development director? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in, in my mind, my way of thinking, all of the planning and zoning stuff except for plat reviews would be off of Tammy's desk. All of the day-to-day -day operations of the department, all of the uh, zoning ordinances sure. would be taken over by the development director. So they would be busy, I mean, now we just have a part-time, so we would have busy enough work for someone for oh, yeah. year round. Oh, yeah. Tammy, what like percent do you think they would take off of your plate if you don't mind sharing? I mean, I think that varies a lot. You know, sometimes I, I think lately P and Z has been talking about a lot of discussions on, you know, should we allow this? Should we not allow that? Should we do this? I mean, a lot of that conversation kind of comes out of site plan review and development review. Um, I will say I don't think I do that part of my job justice because I don't have that much time to spend on it. And having somebody else in that role would benefit planning and zoning a lot. Um, Paul and Melissa, I mean, there's not much management there. They kind of know their system and they have a good system down. So. Still just I, trying to get a better idea of yeah, what that takes off of right. you. Is it just not much, or is it, you know, hey, they're going to be a great help to me? Um, I don't know, 10, 15%? I mean, it definitely would take some things off of my desk. I guess for, um, for all of those possible additional staff, I think what we need to see is, like, okay, what is this person, like the mayor said, so, for example, Raleigh's person, that means that the sewers are going to get jetted these many more times. I need a little bit, I'm a little more anal, so I need a little bit more concrete informa information than just we need another person because we need to do the jetting more often. So I, I would like some concrete numbers, I guess. I like what you're saying. I mean, it, if this is something that could affect our insurance and we aren't doing it, we need to get it done. 
what you're talking about, jetting the, I don't even know what that means, but uh, sounds like, I don't want to do doesn't it. sound like fun, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I think I'm busy next week. But, uh, oh, we'll do it next week. Okay. But then on the flip side, we also said we're going to be contracting more of that work out with somebody else, so then it becomes a challenge to figure out which. Yeah. Well, yeah, I understand that too, but with Raleigh, the one thing that got me thinking too, we know all those guys, you kind of do a little bit of everything. So I see where Raleigh's coming from. If we do know there's guys are going to be age appropriate to be retired out, it's not like you can just train somebody a short amount of time. No. And you have to find the right person, right? Like you said, some guys don't, oh, I only want to do streets, or I only want to, you know, like they don't want to do everything that Raleigh and his crew have to do. So I see that point too where I like being more proactive because it probably would take a good... Don't you think a good year to really get somebody trained in everything that you do? Like really mastering it? I just feel like a lot. So it's still, I mean, yeah. They don't do everything all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still, I mean, yeah. They don't do everything all the time. They may only do something once a year. So the on the on job training only happens when we happen to do that job. But well, we're only doing that job for one day. They don't get a whole lot of training. Yeah. So it's it's difficult to train them. Well, let's come back uh, in two weeks and kind of go with some of those things, Brian, if you can have. Okay. Meet, so we, meeting adjourned. Adjourn. Meeting adjourned. Second. Yeah, it looked like I could just do that. Anyway.